Welcome to Pug TV. I'm Jadrian, and I'll be your host Welcome today. To Pug TV. Oh, put Pug myself on TV. echo for a moment. So tonight it's Wednesday, and this is kind of an open night. So sometimes I just play demos, and I thought, wow, well, it's been a while since I've come and checked out the the website Gaikai. They're going to do a lot of streaming content, and if I remember right, Sony Online Entertainment bought them out. So I wouldn't be surprised if pretty soon we start to see streaming versions of, you know, EverQuest 2 and Vanguard. So just on the website, Gaikai.com, they've really upped their library of game demos. And I'm pretty sure that's what these are. I really don't think that you could come and just play the entire game for free. And then they got the complete library of games here. And as long as you've got the you know latest version of Java up and running, you should just be able to click one of these game covers and play a game. And I know they've had like Mass Effect and Dragon Age 2 on here for a little while, but they've really added quite a few games since the last time I was here. A train game. Agricultural Simulator. Ooh. A ski region simulator. So this is fascinating stuff. Not sure what that says. Black Mirror 3. Oh, Dead Island. Okay, you got me. I'm going to check it out. I'm really torn between Agricultural Simulator and Dead Island, though. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and try Dead Island. Alright. Enter my birthday. This may or may not be, but this just makes me old enough to play everything. Ah, uh, yes. I always run Java for these people. See how it runs. I, I came on here earlier and tried it in Internet Explorer. It seemed fine. Now I'm going to give it a shot in Google just for comparison's sake. I have found in my experience that some things run better in different browsers. I have a sneaky suspicion it depends on which browser I use the most and which one has automatically downloaded additional third-party apps that I'm unaware of. Uh, but well, we'll give this a shot. Uh, Eagle Claw. Oh, there's Eagle Claw. You're not on my. You're not on my list of viewers. I didn't see you were here. Eagle, Eagle Claw says no. Go with Agricultural Simulator. Farm that wheat. Green Elf needs food badly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll give this one a little bit of a chance. And then I'll go back. I'll definitely do the agricultural simulator. Like, that really intrigues me. We bought my father-in-law 18 wheels of steel, the truck driving simulator for cross-country hauling of, of stuff. I played it. I said, sure. I'll drive that 18-wheeler. Oh, <laughs> she says, I'm just teasing my friend. I'm not. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's check out this dead eye. If this is the one I'm thinking of, this is one of the newer zombie games that came out. Anyway, I should probably not broadcast loud. My son loves zombie games, and this probably isn't one that he should hear about. But Eagle, Eagle Claw says it was too funny not to tease about. She thinks I'm joking. Ew, it's got bad words. I try to keep my channel family friendly. Where's the zombies at? They probably got zombie messages in the lyrics here. Oh good, knock me unconscious. That way when the zombies come, they think I'm dead. Sir, looks like you've had enough. Oh, maybe not. What's your room number? I'll make sure you get there safe and sound. Oh. Things don't look right here. 
Yeah, <laughs> she's uh, e Eagle Claw says I think someone had too much root beer. Root beer might be the least of their worries. Oh, went into the wrong bathroom. Oh, I'm not a very nice guy. It's a nice room. There's the root beer. Oh, let me see if I can expand it out a little bit. Ooh, this is probably going to give me nightmares. Single player. How do I start this? I press enter. I guess I press enter. Let's see, I get to be Logan, the throwing expert. I can be Perna, the firearms expert. Sean, sharp weapon expert. Or Sam B, blunt weapon. I'm going to go with the sword. Because that's how you cut them up. Eagle Claw says, root beer and Tic Tacs. Never a good combo. And I thought it was supposed to be root beer and Pop Rocks that were not a good combo. Hmm. Alright, let's pick the... Uh, oh, her health is low. Oh. Too many good choices. I'm going to go with the sword person, though. Because the gun looks cool, but you run out of, of, you know, ammo. And that little hand thing, throwing... Nah, uh, yeah, bullets. Swords. That's got to be the way to go. My father was a very great man. A chief inspector for the Hong Kong police. Even though he died when I was ten, I remember him very well. He was killed by an enforcer for the Wo Xing Wo Triad. And I told myself then that I would follow in his footsteps and honor his memory. Uh, nice character story. Excellent character plot development. There's skill trees. Says it's loading some prologue. I have a feeling I'm not going to make it very far. All right, let's see the cutscene. So I can't quite, I mean, okay, so first person type shooters, but it has these little quest things pop up. So I'm wondering if this is like maybe a, a hybrid you know, one of those RPG type first person shooter type things. Now, for a streaming game, the quality actually is really nice. This is looking really good. Let's let's pick some stuff up here. F. It seems to be fairly responsive. So not only am I streaming, but you know, playing a streaming game at the same time and I seem to be able to do both pretty good so the the stream quality for the Gaikai is a, a very good system they have. Eagle Claw says must be some root beer. You pass out a guy and wake up an Asian girl. You know I was thinking that I was like no nah, I'm not gonna make a comment I'll just just play it but you're right because it's funny because I, I was the drunk dude dancing went into the bathroom and now I'm playing the person that was trying to help the person who said hey this is the ladies room I don't know how I did that it's the combination of root beer and tic tac my wife's trying to remember if she took her medication or not I gotta help her with that Take your pills. Okay, look for useful stuff. Where is the machete just laying down on the floor? 
Ah, here we go. Let's open this up. That's some money. Okay, so the problem that I have with this so far is, let's say I, you know, woke, woke up the hotel and noticed the, you know, there's a power issue or something like that. I don't know if I would just automatically assume it would be okay then to start going through people's personal stuff. Hmm. Uh, it class says suitcases all over the place. Should be plenty of useful stuffs. Just loot them like you were an airline bag handler. <laughs> I know, right? I just say, okay. Now, see, this is right about the time that I would go back to my room and shut the door. Can I pick this up? Okay, I'm like right on the axe, but I, the blade master, I'm not. Oh, hello. Let me just stand on your corpse. What do you have in here? A belt. Ah, here we go. Empty. Gas for lighter. What else do you got? Sorry people. Can I jump? Hey, I can jump. Oh, I do have a stamina bar. That means, yeah, I get to run. Hmm. All right, so we got some basic controls, your standard WASD controls, F to pick stuff up, space bar to jump, shift for running. Okay, so I've looted that room. I don't know if I thoroughly looted my own room. I think I did. All right, well, because I just found a bunch of dead people, I'm going to shut my door and wait for the civil authorities to show up. All right, well, there was your sneak peek at the open-ended game of Dead Island. As you can see, I chose the safe way, and that's to remain calm and in my room for safety. So I wonder what other games they have. Hmm. All right, well, maybe I'll play a little bit more. I just thought that'd be funny to stop right there. Like, well, so much for the open-ended game. I guess I'm done. Ooh, more bags. What's in here? Money, money, money. Okay, so I got all the bags. I think I could. I keep finding bags I can open. Okay, now I think I have all the bags. Oh, that was scary. Okay, flashlight. Oh, I'm actually kind of creeped out. Yeah, quick dial 911. I know. How do I fight? I don't think I can fight yet till they actually give me something to fight with. And what do I not need all this money for? If this is like an apocalyptic end of the world, I don't even remember picking up a flashlight. I'm wondering if they have some kind of cash shop along the way to where you, you know, buy gear and buy upgrades. Oh, I gotta move my mouse just right. Okay, so usually when you're busting into doors, there's usually something bad behind a door, but so far I'm safe. Well, if nothing else, I've got plenty of money. Okay, so this is really going to creep me out when something pops up and I get it with my flashlight. I thought I heard voices. Maybe there's something inside. Yeah, wire. How about a machete? Okay, let's turn the flashlight 
off. I have a feeling it's gonna be like one of those games. Oh, watch it flashlight battery. I didn't. Did it? Did it have a battery? Oh, I think it does. I think the body of the flashlight is maybe a battery indicator, and the white's going down, and then it recharges. Very good. Okay, and then I think this is also going to be one of those games where I'm going to see somebody like crying or bent over in a corner. I go to help them and it's going to jump out and be a, you know, a zombie. I don't want to open those doors. They're probably closed for a reason. Bags. Get my Delta on. Maybe it's one of those shake flashlights. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, maybe it's one of those ones that recharges in sunlight, but I'm not outside yet. Let me just say, those shake flashlights, they work, kind of. Okay, that lighter should come in handy because if nothing else, I can set the zombies on fire. Uh oh. Triggered a bad event. I think we'll go back to the room now. Sparks. Maybe there's something in here. Well, you've said that so far about every single bag. Ooh, battery. Oh, goodness. You know, these people <laughs> that I'm stealing from, they're not very rich. Nine bucks, seven bucks. Soap. Silly people, don't put your money in suitcases. That's what a wallet is for. I know. Problem is, they probably couldn't afford the wallet. I can jump out there. Nope. So we've got some invisible walls. Looks like this is very much a guided adventure. So I'm very, very limited in where I can go. Place is on fire. Okay, I think it is going to let me go. Oh, press shift to sprint. That never sounds good. Okay. I'm at the elevator shaft. But I'm not happy about it. Hold. So far this seems more of a TSA simulator than a zombie game. <laughs> you know what though, but I'm scared. Oh, well there you go. This will be a very quick game. Okay, I see, watch. I was going to say, those are probably zombies. I still haven't got a weapon to fight with yet. I can see it through the camera. Feeling all right, Mike? The shakes, fever, chills. Good. I have a friend. Right now, we gotta kick the hell out of there. Do exactly as I say, okay? You're gonna have to trust me. First, you need to get hold of a weapon. No kidding. Search in the maintenance storage room by the end of the corridor. I would move if I were you. Now. 
Control to crouch. I'm running. It's the infected. Run, run to the storage room. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> oh, run f from the creepy zombies. I see, that's my problem. I was running into them. Ooh. Uh oh, it got me anyway. Oh, they fixed me. Beware of people who start a conversation with, you have to trust me. I don't <laughs> Take my hand if you want to live. And I still haven't got a weapon. my head oh they must have thought I was a zombie what's her problem hmm well things don't look too bad here I got a book. Uh, Eddie, hey, there I am. Oh, hello. I will save him because I can always use a partner. Truxton, hey, welcome, Truxton. Says, you know what's not sexy? When a hot woman zips down her sexy knee-high boots and you see a nasty tube sock sticking out <laughs> I don't know unless you like really long knee-high tube socks I guess okay yeah I gotta go help my friend no Okay, okay, okay. Well, do they have a weapon in here? Do they have a bar of soap? Oh, wait, I found soap earlier. Aha, ha, ha. Energy drink? What else do I need? Teddy bear? Oh. Ah, there it is, there it is. Found it. Dang it, I should have picked the, the blunt weapon expert. I'm going to help my friend. Somehow. Oh, I suck as a zombie killer. Oh. Here we go. Alright, did I do it? Yes! Got it. I know you can't talk about it, but how's the world of warplanes going so far? That's from Truxton. It's actually going really good. My son plays it more than I do, and he does great. I know... Uh, yeah, I guess I can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's under NDA, huh? Um, it's going great. We'll just have to leave it at that. I almost got to telling you stuff about it, but it's actually pretty good.
We were just attacked. Listen, your friend from the hotel's awake. You were right about him being immune to this thing. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have made it. Maybe now we can hold out until help arrives. Are they talking about me? Because I'm playing a chick. I don't know unless there's a different him. You need to get out of there, and I can help you. I can arrange for transportation by air, by sea, but first you need to get here to me. I have many sick and injured here, mate. They're crazy with fear. Tell me where you are. Where are you? You there, mate? Hello? Hello? Oh, God damn it. Hmm. Just touch and go with you for a while. Drexen says, I saw that GamesCon had a booth there and I saw some demos that they were doing. Well, if the demos are anything like the game, it's a gorgeous looking game and it, it plays really easily too. A uh, flight simulator, but really on the arcade side of the flight sim, like if you watch the videos, so it's very simple to just pick up and play. I mean, which is good when you want to have nice... Uh, arena type duels which is what you know the that world of war series that they're coming up with so yeah it's gonna be a good one and what I'm really anxious to see is the world of warships so I, I'm really looking forward to that one and if if that plays similar to world of tanks and world of warplanes then world of warships is gonna be excellent yeah mech warriors will be good too I, yeah, isn't that the rumor they're going to be a free to play as well? That would be very cool. Alright, lifeguard. Thank you. Uh oh. Me yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, here I go. I guess I get to go out here now. There you go. I keep using. Oh, what did I find? Oh, that's not any better than what I have. So. Oh, Jogan says, yeah. So the the mech warrior should be free to play. But then it, you know, but then it's got its different le tiers of support. I'm not gonna pay for like the founder or anything like that. So I'm not getting in any of the beta testing. But. uh because I've already thrown my money in with Guild Wars 2, which, woot woot, starts Friday night. Crazy. I cannot believe that it has been, uh, you know, I mean, the game's been in development for a while, but it's like, wow, it's finally here. You know, the next next big thing starts Friday night. Or at least that's the last thing I read was... uh going to be like Friday morning, you know, midnight kind of transitional period. And then, uh, well, like, so Friday at midnight, so the early, early morning of Saturday for the pre-purchasers. And then if you are lucky, they said they might open the servers a little bit earlier and then kind of start doing a staggered entrance, which would be nice. Tracy says, I was very tempted to buy one of the founders packages, but my money pinching side stopped me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what stopped me in my money pinching. So yeah, nope, I'm ready for Guild Wars 2. That would probably be the big consumer of my upcoming time for a while, that and uh, the different war games that I'm slowly, slowly acquiring. So money for MMOs and, and stuff with subscription fees are probably not going to be in my foreseeable future. It's just interesting because reading some different things how a lot of the big MMOs like The Secret World had some layoffs. They said they're just restructuring and you know the layoffs are temporary but um, you know that's usually the, the beginnings of we need to do something different because our game is failing. So I, I foresee free-to-play microtransaction shops coming soon for them. And Star Wars, they posted they lost a huge, you know, of their people that left. They said uh, like 40% of those people left to go to games that were free-to-play, which is another reason why they're thinking, you know, 
time to start hitting free to play. Um, but that's that's why I'm anxious for the Guild Wars. I didn't mind paying the money up front, but with the free to play aspect, I'm ready. And it's only in a few days. Good, good, good. Uh, Chuck's and asks, are you going to do Swore Tour when it goes free? Yes. Yes, I will. I have my character. I, and my hope is... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. My hope is that I'll be able to have access to my character. Because I've done some games that transition to free-to-play. And then just based on whatever rule set they had, I lost access to characters. So... You know, if I can get access to my my higher level Jedi, then you know I I would definitely want to want to play again. Oh, hello. I think we're gonna have to get a new paddle here. Oh yeah. Oh hey. This is just wrong. I broke my paddle. Hmm. Eagle Claw says, I'm not going to go back to Swotor. They nerfed a lot of the fun out of it for me. Uh, well, I stopped playing a few months ago. So I guess I'm kind of out of the loop on maybe what all's been nerfed and changed. So I think I would just have to go back and give it a check. Well, I'm trying to burn it. Mm, nice. Yeah, I did read that they had a, just recently had an event that really flopped in SWOTOR. So, you know, it's quite possible that, I don't know, maybe things will change. Maybe they'll unnerf some things and make the events a little less of a pain to play to try and get folks back under their free to play graces hard to say and then Truxton says he's going back also uh, to me personally what would really sell the game for me as a you know continue doing kind of a thing is if they oh I better save those cola cans is if they ever fix oh I'm going to hurt myself trying to open that. Uh-oh, guess what? Ran out of time on my demo. It was timed. I thought maybe it got to a certain level, but yeah, I'm used to timed demos. The, uh... Now I can do the agricultural simulator. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I'm going to try this one next, Confrontation. So let me load that and I'll finish my thought. Um, the Space Combat, that's what I was getting at. Swotor, for me, killed Space Combat with their railed system. Tried very hard to like it. I know so many people were like, yeah, it's like playing Star Fox when you had a Nintendo 64. And I'm thinking, but I don't have a Nintendo 64. I've got this state-of-the-art PC. I'm playing a state-of-the-art game set in a state-of-the-art futuristic world compared to what we have, I need to have some 3D flying. And I think what killed part of SWOTOR is people were looking for a replacement to Star Wars Galaxies. It's like, if you're going to kill Star Wars Galaxies, which was like the premier pinnacle Star Wars MMO, which had a lot of housing and crafting and 3D space combat, and then make a, a game to replace it, you want to add to that model, not take away from it. And they took out housing and crafting and 3D space combat and put in a rail shooter and, you know, they put the Bioware story on it, which the story just alone was not enough to carry it because at some point you run out of story, you got to have other stuff to do. So I think think they really kind of shot themselves in the foot with some of their design choices for SWOTOR, but, you know, it's still just fun to have a Jedi and go romp around. It's not like when I say I'm going to go back and play it that that's going to be one of my new major things. It's going to be like, hey, I feel like hopping on and playing a Jedi and taking a look at their whatever latest event is. So that that's going to be my take on SWOTOR. 
Uh, let's see here. Chuckson says, "Well, sub games nowadays are dying off." Yeah, you know, and the, and the sad thing is, the free-to-play games are dying off, but a lot of people don't spend any money in the cash shop. But I think it's offset by people who spend a lot of money in the cash shop. So it's just really hard to say how much money the companies can make. I mean, apparently they make a lot of money if they're going free to play, but at some point, somebody out there, they're going to die off. But then again, if they're dying off even as a free to play game, then they probably wouldn't have made it very far as a subscription based game. So, yeah, free to play. And I even hate to use that term because none of these are truly free to play, but. Um, what would, what would be a good term for that? Play your way. Maybe I can coin that. Play your way games. Uh, pay your way games. Yeah, that does seem to be the way it's going. Eagle, Eagle Claw says, They made Jedi healing almost pointless with the way they nerfed it. They can't even compete anymore. Hmm. Really? That's interesting. Oh yeah, especially like a sage, because that was supposed to be a healer. So that's that's interesting. All right, there's my profile, and continue. So I, I don't know what this confrontation game is, so that's why we're checking it out. Chuckson says they need to get rid of the space part. You're right. I'm gonna do the same thing. Yeah, I just play it every now and then. E Eagle Claw says, The innovative crafting system is a joke. It's a carbon copy of the companion crafting system from free-to-play Grand Fantasia, which I've not played. So, interesting to see that there is a game out there that already had a similar system. So, kind of sad. Innovative, if, if I think about it, Grand Fantasia is probably an Asian MMO. I think I've seen it around. So maybe innovative in sense of a Western market MMO. But they have not been shy in saying that they have taken elements from many, many MMOs and threw it into theirs. I just think they left out a few very important things. Uh, Eagle Claw also says, that is what I had, a top tier Sage healer. See, how did I know? Sage, because that was, that was like the healing class on the Jedi side. So if you nerf the healing class, I mean, then it kind of really takes away part of the purpose of that, like one of the major roles of that class is healing, you know? That was the point. Uh, okay, so let's try confrontation campaign, and let's see. Ooh, there's an army painter. So this is some kind of army game like a tabletop army type of game. Let's put it on easy, shall we? Cyanide Studio. Oh, that's interesting, because just testing this out today to make sure it works. I try to load up the Game of Thrones, and I think Game of Thrones was by Cyanide, so they, they make more than one game. The peoples tear each other to pieces in the name of light, destiny, or darkness. Everywhere, heroes chosen by the gods gather their armies under banners bearing such symbols as the jackal, the griffin, the wolf, or the scorpion. scorpion. These heroes accomplish valiant feats of arms of faith. Eco Claw says, We went from being wanted for groups and being a challenge to keep everyone going to being shunned because we don't stand a chance in a difficult fight. See, and I think that's sad because it used to be, you know, that, that was the thing that made you important because the alternative was the sorcerer on the Sith side and their real big focus was kind of a damage output and the sage you know was kind of like the healing so I don't think the sage had the same DPS output that the sork had but then if that's what you wanted you would have played a sork you know the sorcerer so to kind of nerf that major aspect of a sage I think that's that's awful you know but usually those kinds of things come about because 
the community or, or certain individuals in the community were vocal enough to say that, that that made the sage OP because now you've got a Jedi who's got distance fighting plus healing. We can't kill them. From the outpost of his command so. at the gates of the Ivory Dunes, Seret, the commander of the Griffin Templars, uh, okay. Well, that's a very nice story that I'm not reading. Let's move right along and see what this is. Character data. Oh, I lost my mouse. There it is. Oh, it's loading. That's why. Their goal is to find Gather your squad members and find the laboratory entrance. The their clones. Just by this the few, <laughs> just by the few seconds, I'm going to say this reminds me of like the Warhammer 40k games. Because when they talk about army painter and stuff, so I feel like it's almost going to be like Warhammer Fantasy, but in these guys' fantasy world. Which is cool, because I like Warhammer Fantasy. So that's my guess. So if I have an army painter, that means at some point I can do skirmish battle maps and stuff, build an army with points, possibly, and paint them. I'm guessing, because I've never played it. But that's kind of how I feel. Let's find out. Ooh. Oh. That was a horrible character model. Oh. That right there just killed it for me. I know that's that's sad to say, but Ike Total War series has better character models than that. All right, so is this right click to move or? Yep, right click. Oh, wait a minute! I don't even get WASD keys to move my map. Oh, I'm sorry. This game isn't gonna work for me. Rotate camera, hold down the mouse wheel, use the, the shortcuts up, down, left, right. Oh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I have to get that far in the tutorial. I gotta use the arrow keys. How quaint. Truxton says, I'm sorry to hear that, Eagle. Maybe it's time to re-roll. Oh. Those are the dreaded words of any MMO player when they nerf a class. You it's not time to re-roll, it's time to fix what they broke and put it back to some... Yeah, see, that makes sense. You know, re-roll, try something else, maybe there's a different fit. But at the same time, we, the player, should not have to be how I feel. This is how I feel. So I'm not going to invalidate what you've said, Truxton, because it is a valid option. But this is how I feel on it. I feel like if I have to re-roll because the game company nerfed something, I'm being punished. And why should I be punished to play their game? I'll just stop paying my 15 bucks a month and go spend my money elsewhere. And that's kind of how I felt with it based on the space game aspect. I love the space combat. That's why I like Star Trek you know, online. And so when I went to play Star Wars, it was like I feel like I'm being punished to play a silly rail game. I mean, there was like really no challenge to it. You just buy some gear. Your missions are limited by your level anyway. Uh, so I was like, well, you know what? Instead of feeling punished, I'll just take my money elsewhere. So that's how it, I felt. Eagle Claw says, lol, I was even part of the fight to get it changed to Sage instead of Jedi Wizard back before beta. Ah. And then uh, Truxton says, there comes a time when you just have to reroll. It's true. That's why I say I won't invalidate that option. You know, at some point, you know, once you've hit in-game content and you're looking for new stuff to do, re-roll. You know, so it is valid. Eagle Claw says, I was part of the closed beta. The devs actually told us that we were there only for metrics and not feedback. They weren't interested in what we had to say to help improve the game. Which, you know, is so weird because I've heard that so many different times from different sources that, that, that's sad. <laughs> that's sad. I know when I got into the Star Wars, you know, beta testing, it, it was one of the last open betas they had, and that blatantly was put up on the screen. You know, there was like no feedback system or nothing. Like, we were just there for stress testing kind of a thing. So, that's sad, because that, that's my understanding, is they pretty much made that, this is our game, you're just here for us to record server performance and whatnot. Uh, hello. Right click. 
Eh, he's fighting. Do I have abilities? I might. He's got catchy music. Perfect. Any character engaging in combat? I have health and whatnot. Okay, I can rotate. My camera is kind of stuck. I can zoom in and out a little bit. This kind of sucks. I had more fun in Dead Island and I didn't know what to do there, but this just isn't really sucking me in at all. It's just kind of bleh. Can I fight or do I talk? Do I have to highlight both of them? Alright, let's see what I can do with two people. Hmm. Uh, Tristan says, well, you don't have to stop playing, but you can go back to it later. And then uh, Eagle Claw says, I was in the beta since the start of it. I have been in the forum since 08. Wow. I signed up for it back in 08. Uh, I don't even remember when I did sign up. I know I signed up for it like a long time ago, but I was never active on the forums, and so I was always wondering, how come they don't pick me for beta? Well, it's because I didn't really show interest. I just wanted to see how it would develop. And I have to admit things that I've seen it's changed quite a bit from what I saw back then but it's just it it just doesn't have enough oomph no housing you know nothing like that in fact even Rift I just got done reading is gonna add housing so another article I read from the EA they were like well the game that we started to create was great for back when we started making it just doesn't really design to compete with anything today is the sad thing their story I had to admit that's the only thing I enjoy is just maybe playing the game just enough so I can see the story unfold the personal character story unfold but once you get done with the missions and stuff it's just an MMO you just need to add a few more things so hmm. Trucks says I live in Austin and it was advertised a lot back in 08 flyers everywhere yeah probably because that would have been a good way to get find people to go work at EA BioWare because aren't they down there somewhere or used to be bring money to their shop or something Ecoclaw says yeah I got sucked in for the CE really wish I had saved my money oh you did the collector's edition I would have loved it just for the statue I know I, I'm not doing collector's edition I, I I would like to. I'm just not. I got so mad when I got my Final Fantasy 14 Collector's Edition and that game really tanked. So I'm hoping they develop a free to play model. Because I would go back to that one if it was free to play. Just so I can see the changes. The 2.0 version of that is going to be good. But yeah, speaking of Collector's Editions, I got burned as well. So I'm. I would have gotten a collector's edition of Guild Wars 2, but I would have rather... I'm glad I spent my money on two copies so my wife can play with me. Uh, Trixon says, yeah, the EAO Bioware folks, yeah, they're in Austin. Off topic, but Guild Wars 2 servers are in Dallas. Oh. That is a very interesting. I did not know that. Are we attacking it? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, I do have abilities. Yeah. Okay. Ecoclaw says, I wish the CE could have had a choice in statue. I would rather have, uh, yeah, Satil Sean over Malgus. That would have been something. Well, you know, and that's kind of one reason why I'm not too upset I didn't get the Guild Wars 2 Collector's Edition. It would have been nice to have had that premium figure, but it's a char. And if they had additions where you could pick the figure, then I probably would have been more tempted to have found the money somewhere or have saved up between now and then and buy a collector's edition later with the figurine that I want. And you figure there's a few main characters in the game that are representative of the race or just one person per race. So like a Char or an Ashura or one of the Silvari or a human or a Norn figure option. That would have been cool. 
Oh, uh, Eagle Claw says, I haven't even taken the statue out of the box. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be worth money later if you leave it. Me, though, I I'd be I'd be playing with that thing while I play the game. Yeah, take that. It would not last in the box. The interface on this is just clunky. It's not very fun. I don't feel very epic with an army of just me and this person. Oh good, I'm going to pick somebody else up. Do I have to resurrect them? Who are they? Find my squad. Alright, so what do I have here? I thought this was a holy prayer. Well, I'm healing me. Ah, uh, here we go. Click. But, well, to be quite honest, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh. Oh, okay, they're grouped with me now. Now I can probably try to... Maybe heal him after a few seconds. I don't know. Eagle Claw says, I haven't unwrapped anything other than the discs and key generator. Oh, yeah, the key generator. That turned out not to be too bad, but I had mine on my iPad, and every time I wanted to play, I had to go dig out my iPad, which is, you know, it's okay. It served its purpose of security. I just remember there was a point where I was like, yeah, I think I'll disable the key security. And they said, well, to do that, I actually had to call in and talk to customer support. And I said, yeah, that's just too much hassle. I guess I'll just leave the security enabled. Defeat. <laughs> oh. I was trying to wait to get my heal spell back to try and heal them because they're part of my group. But whatever I did, I did wrong. <laughs> so... Uh, I guess that's what happens when you don't pay attention to the instructions 100%. Eh. That, that didn't grab me. I'm glad they put a demo for that because I definitely would not buy it. That's not even worth downloading off a BitTorrent site. Uh, Dead Space, Sniper, Mountain Blade. These I've always been curious about. Mountain Blade. I always hear a lot of good things about them. I own Vegas 2. Darksiders, I played a demo. This would be the other one that might be fun. A-Train. When I, when I was younger on the regular PlayStation, you know what? This might be it. I think there was a game we played called A-Train, which was awesome as far as laying out trains and setting bus stops and schedules. And You know what? I won't do it now, but I think I might come back and see what this A-Train is all about. But of course, it'll be a timed demo, I'm sure. So, right as I realize, yeah, this game's awesome, it'll shut down. Agricultural Simulator, I'm still still going to check out, along with the uh, Ski Region Simulator. The Witcher, Assassin of Kings. I thought I had started to play that, but I don't remember. I, like I said, I started up Game of Thrones. That actually looked pretty good. I'm going to go back to it. Uh, Terra we did once before. That was pretty good. And uh, I'm just curious what this is, like an RTS or if that's an actual flight simulator, air conflicts, secret wars. So Gaikai, that's why I'm here today. Checking out what demos they have on the free-to-play scene. Quite a few options, as you can see. Um, looks like they're adding all the time. Sony bottom. So like I said, I, I bet pretty soon we're going to start seeing some MMOs. Let's see here. Before I take off for the evening, let's just catch up on chat. Ooh, I need a haircut. Or comb it better. I'm getting older. You can see all my gray hair coming in. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Truxton says, hey, Jadrian, have you played Ultima Online? Why, yes. I played Ultima Online back when it was only one world. Yep, we had it when it first came out. We probably didn't get it like the first day it was out. I'm pretty sure it might have been like out a couple of months. 
but we got it when it was still a big novelty like ooh, what's an MMO and what's funny let me tell you my little experience with Ultima Online so we know nowadays that MMOs are persistent online worlds and your character data is saved on a server so that when you leave and you come back your your character stuff pulls up and you continue playing well back in the early early days I had to play it on dial up okay so this is old time long ago so we would play the game and I remember like I would log out go do whatever I had to do come back and my character stuff is gone or it would be you know the character had rolled back so back in the early days server maintenance and stuff like that was just atrocious on those games well we called customer service and we were like hey I keep losing stuff every time I pop in I've like either lost money or this that and the other thing and I go you know d is the data saving and they're like well you can't you can't save your character it's not that kind of game I was like, well, I understand there's no, like, save option, but shouldn't my data save from one game session to the next, you know, the persistent world, like it says on the box? And I got into an argument with the customer support person because the customer support person was kept telling me, there's no save. You can't save your character. Sir, you can't save your progress. We've come a long way since then. But, but yeah, played Ultima Online. Eve Claus says, so all the books, statues, and stuff are all still wrapped up. Um, going back to her box, everything saved. Which, when you, when you mention that, so like, Nala, I you know, no idea what you look like, but you know, I could just imagine you doing a Felicia Day unboxing video of your Star Wars The Old Republic Collector's Edition, much like Felicia Day did of her Collector's Edition Guild Wars 2. You know, like, ee, oh, here's this statue, Arr, you know, jealous. And then she says, Mountain Blade Warband is loads of fun. So I guess I'll have to try it out because I got a demo for it. And then Truxton 2 says, the original, yeah. Kept that in a nice dry place and take care of it. It'll be worth lots of money. Oh, talking about the box. And then if you wanted, JJ, I could let you play Diablo 3 for a bit, but I don't use my account. I was in high school when it came out. Oh, Ultima. Diablo 3. I don't know how I feel about Diablo 3. I played it for a little bit before it went live. I got into the beta test for it. They can't even call it that. I got into like the public preview for it. I don't know. It just, nah. I might. I'll try to remember that. I, there might come a point where I'll say, "Yeah, Truxton, let me try it out." Uh, Coker says, "Lol, it just came out." Yeah, I think you got the two games backwards. So, oh, okay. Yeah, they they caught up. I'm catching up to the conversation. I'm slow. So yeah, they straightened it out. D3 just came out. Ultima Online came out long time ago. So, uh, yeah, Diablo 2. And to be honest, I played Diablo 2 very little. For some reason, I I like the first one. Maybe just because that's what I grew up on. But I love Diablo 1. And I even found somewhere there was a Flash website where they had like Diablo 1 that you could play through your web browser and. I was playing it and I thought that was fun. I like just playing the thief, hitting my shift key, standing still and just shooting the bow. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a Diablo 1 fan. I remember we had that and I even bought the expansion so I had the monk and I think it was a barbarian or something that came with it. We even did the cow thing where you got to wear like a cow costume. I don't know, just Diablo 1, That's I really like that one. Iqlaus says, I remember when MMOs were advertised as graphic muds. Yeah, molt multi-user dungeons you know what and it's funny too because even before EverQuest and before Ultima Online and during that time there was like a lot of games like a company called Sierra they had the realm we played that um, there was Meridian 59 so I mean there was like a actually I won't say quite a few but there were actually several MMOs if you want to call it that before Ultima Online and even EverQuest took off and I've seen a lot of those through the development years. So it's, it's a very fascinating history we have. And I was even thinking about the other day because I was having a conversation with some folks. 
they play a game called Advanced Squad Leader, which is a, a tabletop war game. So not nothing MMO related or video game related. And they were talking about subscribers, and they said, "Yeah, you know, talking about the board game industry." And they said, "Yeah, I, I'd be, you know, happy if like 10,000 people played." advanced squad leader and they they asked me well because I I play MMOs they said well how many people play MMOs and I said wow he's happy if 10,000 people play this board game and I was like well right now last reported you know they've had a drop in numbers but World of Warcraft says you know over like 9 million players so that definitely is the big player so here's here's where my story is going with that so World of Warcraft is like the big king right now well, before it was EverQuest, and that was the big dominating king forever. And they, you know, people were waiting on a an EverQuest killer. Then it's World of Warcraft, and so now I'm just wondering, what will be the the next big thing? Because there will be. I mean, it's just evolution, and I think Missa Pandera is not it. <laughs> I think I think at some point it's going to peter off. Then uh, there's going to be something to come out that will replace WoW. I know there will be. I just don't know what. So, yeah, MMOs, the evolution from mud to this big thing to this big thing to what's next. Crazy, crazy stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, even even non stuff. Yeah, they're they're talking about all kinds of stuff now. Yeah. Oh, the lunar silver star story. Loved them on the Genesis. I think those were. I think I even had it on the Sega CD. I had the CD set. Oh man, I loved that game. I loved it because it had the the little blending of the short animated clips and the recorded voice of the characters and the singing and yeah, that was phenomenal stuff. Love it. But that's it for me. Time to get going. So, but just a quick catch up on what's going on for the rest of the week. Thursday, I should be able to do some EverQuest broadcasting. I don't think I've got uh, work that will carry me into the evening. Friday, I had a last minute shift change, if you will, and they shifted my class that I do from... Um, I had a 10 a.m. class I was going to teach, and now I've been shifted to like 1 p.m. till 9:30. So I'm not quite sure exactly if I'll make it on time to anything on Friday. The other thing with Friday is that's possibly they might let us in a little bit early for Guild Wars 2. So I'm not sure if I'll be doing the Fellowship Friday. I know we've missed it for a couple of weeks, but I might be attacking Guild Wars 2 on Friday night. My father-in-law is coming over so he can boot up his laptop and get it downloaded and play. My wife is ready and she'll be downloading the latest updates to our clients throughout the day to make sure we're ready. So I think Friday night we'll we're going to be focusing on trying to get Guild Wars 2 going. So that's kind of how we're looking for the rest of the week. And then the weekend, I honestly don't know if I'll be streaming. Yeah, I know I'll be playing. I just don't know, don't know if I'll be streaming. I might, just so I can answer questions for those who couldn't get in. Because, yeah, well, my wife says might as well. But I think she's got a friend who, who might be joining us. If we're lucky, we'll meet up with like Pyromancer and anybody else out there who's got, you know, Guild Wars 2. We'll be on the, I already forgot the name, of it, Tarnished Coast. We'll be on the Tarnished Coast server. Uh, I'll probably be making like a couple of characters. There will be a Jadrian running around and... I don't know the name of the second one, but I'm going to make a guy and a girl just so I can see and collect armor and equipment from both sets. I only get five character slots. I might have to buy more, but because the game is brand new, I want to be able to see and collect as much gear that I can. So um, you'll find out exactly what my names are, but I'm going to try and at least reserve Jadrian, and then I'll, I'll try and reserve... Uh, another character, a female character at some point too, so you can look for me in game, but I'll, I'll put those names out later on. Um, and my wife will have a Roselia, so there will be a Roselia running around, so you can look us up. 
Yeah, Eagle Claw says uh, the 16-bit equals the Golden Age of games. Yeah, kids, she say kids have missed out on so much that Golden Age of development, and uh, but have they? Because there's a point where I look back and I say, yeah, those games suck now. I don't know if I can play it, but in a way, actually, like the Lunar Silver Star story, the story is what sold that. It was engaging. Yeah, we had one that we played on the Sega Dreamcast called Skies of Arcadia not to ever be reproduced but yet was amazingly fun great story good gameplay so yeah I think kids have missed out on quite a bit but they're happy with what they have we got what we got it is what it is yeah Truxton says I lived through all the glory yeah so did me and but now I get to experience the glory that's continuing to come and uh, you know hopefully I'll be able to do gaming and stuff for quite a few more years. See, it's funny because my parents, they play games. So I can only imagine what it's like for them because I know my mom, she likes to be on the cutting edge of stuff, but, you know, um, how, how much is she going to get to see? What's going to be cutting edge in the next, you know, 20 years when, you know, possibly, you know she's not here but but I'm here 30 years from now and then my kid is like you know gee what did you do when you were a kid uh, it's just just funny the world changes so much so it'll be interesting here's what we have today but what's it gonna be like 30 years from now when I'm my parents age so kinda cool yeah video games all kinds of stuff yeah that's what Truxton says yeah I'm wondering what games will be when your kids your kid is your age playing. Yeah, it's just really hard to say what it will be. So, it'll be fun. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go, so I will see you later. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow with no problem, at least for a little bit. And then uh, Friday, we'll be on, so I can at least be ready to pop into Guild Wars 2 when it's available. So, see you all later. Have a good night. Thanks for dropping by. Drop in. Drop in. What?